Hello, good evening, and how are you? Welcome, happy Sunday. Welcome to Ask the Doctors. Yes, the time is 8 uh, 01 p.m., and I see that some people are already here. Welcome, my name is Dr. Frederick Unubohai, and I always tell you good life in a sense. Now, today's program, uh, we have a guest that will be joining us, and we are talking about fibroid. Fibroid. Uh, questions and answer session tonight on fibroid. So uh, there are so many questions we have received on fibroid and then we decided today let's answer so many questions on fibroid. This program is Ask the Doctors every Sunday, 8 p.m. with African time. Anywhere you are in the world, we always meet here online. Now, I'm live on two platforms. I'm live on Facebook, and I'm equally live on TikTok. So um, I'll be bringing up my guests quickly. I hope they are here. I have, um, no, so my co-host is usually Dr. Israel Irabonose, Dr. Bless Narimi, and today we have a guest joining us, my very good friend and brother, Dr. Temi Tokbe Ugushola. About how are you doing, sir? I'm fine. I'm fine. Good evening, everyone. It's yes, good to be here. Great. Yes, 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 yes. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I can see Royal Princess online. Royal Princess, how are you? Good evening. Uh, Tonye, good evening. Uh, Mali Diaz, good evening. Dr. Israel is not yet here. Good evening. Now, we are taking questions. Sue, we are not taking your questions. We are answering so many questions on Fibroid. Don't worry. When we've answered all the questions we have here, hmm, then you can ask us any other one you feel like asking us. Do you understand? So we're not going to waste much time. Uh, so Tim Tokba is prepared for you. Uh, no, so we, we move earpiece, Oga. Omo, I've been no one do this TikTok live. I've been one just face Facebook live. So those on TikTok, eh, please, make una, make una join us for Facebook. You understand? So let's concentrate for everybody or on everybody here on Facebook. So if you're on TikTok, please move over to Facebook, Dr. Fredosta Official. Move over to Facebook, Dr. Fredosta Official. Uh, yes, this, this other phone don't get one issue. Okay, Chief, let's start. Okay. What causes fibroid? Because we hear people tell you that um, I'm not supposed to have fibroid. There's no fibroid in my family. And I woke up, I went to the hospital, they say I have fibroid. What exactly causes fibroid? So, um, thank you. Fibroid goes by so many names. But for us to understand it clearly, it's um, a kind of tissue formed from the cells of the uterus. So those tissues are part of the uterus originally. It's not anything coming from outside. So it's a kind of tissue. When we say tissue, we talk about when cells come together. They now form a clump. So the normal tissue in the uterus are smooth muscles. We call them smooth muscles. When they now come together and form as a result of women, hormone changing, so many other things can can cause it, but we can call it a clump of tissues, a clump of cells. And of course, it can form on any part of the uterus. Till date, fibroids only form in and around the uterus. Mm -hmm. So when we now talk about the causes, we can go down so many lists. I think we should um, look at the causes based on hormones, Waiting too long before you get pregnant, so many things can cause that. And the fact that nature itself, so you can run without any known cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. If you're just coming, you're welcome. We're talking about uh, fibroid tonight. We have Dr. Tim Dr. in the house. So any question that is not related to fibroid, you might not be responding to that uh, comment tonight. You understand? We are just talking about fibroid. So let's let's quickly um, talk about the causes of fibroid. Because some women will tell you that it's never in my family. I don't. I never did this. I never did that. And how come I 
I develop fibroids. So we know that you might you might not even do anything. Okay, we have um, we have Dr. Israel in the house. Dr. Israel Bonose is also here. Dr. Israel, good evening. How are you doing? Dr. Israel cannot even hear me. Dr. Israel. Good evening. Happy Sunday. Yes, yes. Happy Sunday. Welcome. We are still expecting Dr. Blessing to join yes. us. So we have three, we have three doctors online. Dr. Israel, okay, let me let me go to you quickly. You're welcome, Dr. So that let's 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 work with time. Um what causes fibroid? We are, we are just talking about the different causes. Somebody's asking us what are the causes of fibroid because I just developed fibroid, so I never knew what caused it. Let's go. What causes fibroid? Okay, um to me I, I think the there might just be some theories about the causes of fibroid, but I don't think there's any real cause of fibroid because um, fibroid is just like um, Dr. Israel, your network is, is, slowing, is slowing down. Okay, Chief, go ahead. Respond yeah. quickly. Yeah. Okay. So, um, like I said before, Dr. Israel has be more specific about it. Over the years, over these years, a decade of study, the causes have been grouped into some major causes. For instance, interplay between the hormones in the woman's body. So we believe that, oh, the, the hormones in the woman's body, some, some hormones favor fiber production. Sometimes the, no, the cause is not known at all. Sometimes we say, oh, because this woman has stayed from giving birth for a while. That's why the uterus now that has been empty now look for something to be like a child, mm -hmm. just to keep itself busy. So it's not known to run in families. It is not known to cause cancer. It rarely causes cancer. So it's not the cancerous growth at all. When we talk about fibro, you group, group it among the non-cancerous growths. Hormones are always interchanging in women. So not having children for a long time. Some people will say obesity increases, but that will be in the class of risk factors. That is what can make you more prone to risk factors. So till date, the real cause is not really known. All these things I've mentioned are theories and occurrences over the years. Okay, um, if you are just coming, you are welcome. Today's topic is on fibroid, and we are breaking down some of the common questions we have received from you concerning fibroid. So we are taking them down. In case you missed the introductory part, you could watch this video again from the beginning. Now we spoke about uh, the causes of fibroid. Ex the exact cause is not known. It's important you, you take note of this. And then there are other theories. Oh, obesity. Oh, hormones. Oh, a woman is not pregnant. She's not been pregnant for a very long time. And, and nature forbids vacuum. So something has to fill that place. There are so many causes. Yeah? Now let's go to another phase of yeah. the common questions we have seen. So I have heard ladies say that um, I bleed heavily, therefore I have fibroid. There are so many symptoms of fibroid. What are the symptoms of fibroid? How would a woman know that she has fibroid? Um, in some cases, you might not even know that you have fibroid. You could just be there without mm -hmm. you having any problem, no issues at all. You are living your life and one day, oh, we discover. But when there are symptoms, what are the symptoms mm -hmm. of fibroid? Yeah, so let, let's take Dr. Tindobe and let's have Dr. Israel again join us. Okay, yes. Okay, okay so um, like you said, many, many people may not even know that there are fibroids going on. Dr. Israel, you're welcome back. Thank you. I don't know my, my network sometimes can be, can be funny. Okay. Okay, Dr. Timber, continue, 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 please. Okay, okay. So, many times, many times, people don't even know that there is a fibroid there. 
the moment people start having symptoms that some symptoms are going to list is when oh probably it's getting complicated it's getting large it's getting to the size where it's becoming uncomfortable and i say oh i feel fullness so person can feel fullness in the abdomen some people may have remember i say some people some people may have heavy menstrual bleeding And when, that, when there's fullness, it will make some people have frequent um, frequency, that is frequent urination. Oh, I need to go to the toilet to pee. Oh, I just went just now, but I feel like peeing again. Because the size is pushing on the bladder, making the bladder smaller. There may be pain. Maybe. Sometimes it's painless. So, increase in size, heavy menstrual bleeding, that is, the fibroid is now causing menses to be heavier than normal. Oh, I was using two pounds before, now I'm not using six, I'm using seven. Um, back ache, leg pain, abdominal fullness. Ah, madam, we get belly. I say, no, I don't know what's happening. My stomach is just getting big. I mean, be a fibroid. Because of the size, it may disturb passing of stool. So, constipation. I, I never shit for three days. My belly just full. If I say nah, gas did it, it may be a fibroid. There may be a pressure. When we say pressure symptoms, I, I just feel that there's something in the in the abdomen. Remember, fibroid does not occur in men. So we are talking about uterine fibroids, fibroids in women. So a woman complains of heavy menses, fullness, constipation. She complains of going to the toilet to pee frequently leg pain or back pain, then some swelling, some mass. So for most people, they don't know. There will be no symptoms at all for fibroids. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Dr. And um, yeah. very importantly, again, um, if I may add, now, if you had or you have any of these symptoms mentioned, we are not saying you have fibroid. It's important to see a doctor so that they can rule out other medical conditions that might give you those symptoms. I've noticed that most times yeah. when we mention some symptoms online, people believe, oh, this is what I have. No. There are other medical conditions that may give you symptoms looking like this. So this is why it's important to speak with your doctor. Please don't forget to share. Share this video, invite your friends, and you can also send stars. Now, one other very important question uh, question I receive from a lot of people is that can I get pregnant if I have fibroid? They say the reason I'm not pregnant is because I have fibroid or when we discover that a woman has fibroid, most times the next thing is uh, I can't get pregnant, I can't get pregnant. So can a woman get pregnant with fibroid? Well, fibroid if you are going to take time in explaining what a fibroid is, we may take time. So fibroid can occur in different parts of the uterus, depending on the size, the location. It could delay pregnancy. But fibroid does not affect pregnancy. Sometimes we have seen cases where a woman is pregnant and she has a fibroid and she has a pregnancy to full term without resolving the pregnancy. But well, there are some fibroids that are so large, if they're in the fallopian tube, that is where sperm and will go and fertilize the egg, they can block. But the other, um, what you call it now, the other fallopian tube may be open. No woman has to. Mm -hmm. If the fallopian, if the fibroid is so large that it blocks the cervix, that is, it's where the uterus opens downwards, can also cause delay but usually fibroids do not prevent do not affect pregnancy very good i think i will have to re-echo what you said uh is there an echo i don't know why am i getting the feedback so fibroid um can be in a woman and this woman can get pregnant give birth very okay right and why in some yeah. other cases in some other cases the fibroid could be at certain locations and can affect. So fibroid is not a direct cause of infertility for those who are trying to get pregnant. I yeah. see you all joining us. Mm -hmm. uh, EC, 
Maurice, Royal Princess, Osadolo, Tonya. Now, very good. They discovered fibroid in a woman. She's worried, she's scared. What should she do? Hmm. So, when you see a doctor, the doctor will go through a list of things. She's going to ask, he's going to ask you, what are those things you feel with the fibroid? He's going to examine you. He's going to probably do a scan, do some. The fiber, the, the scan will tell you what size it is. It'll tell you where it is located. So the doctor will now tell you, oh, with this size, we can either give you medications to reduce the size, or the doctor can tell you, oh, this location, uh, you don't need to worry. If it's located outside the uterus and it's not big, then there's no rush to remove it. They'll just give medications, or they will just watch it and see, it. is it growing fast? Is it giving you some of those symptoms I mentioned? If it's not growing into the uterus and you're not even looking to have babies or you're not worried about the size, then we do what I call watchful waiting. That is, we just wait and watch. You can do your scan every month, every two months, just to see if it's growing fast. If it's located outside the uterus and it's not big and it's not causing any of those symptoms, you can choose to leave it. But there are medications that doctors will give you for big fibroids that will reduce the size so that it will be easier to remove when the doctor now decides to do a surgery. And there are some that doctor will tell you, look, madam, if you want to have children or if you want to stop these symptoms that you're having or you want to stop this bleeding that you're having, you have to come and do a surgery. So not every time you need surgery. There are some medications that reduce the size. There are some medications that the doctor will give you that will help with those symptoms. And that sometimes the doctor will just say, Madam, there's no need. Maybe every month, every two months, let's be doing a scan to see the growth. So those are the okay. things. It doesn't really push you to emergencies. It's not an emergency. Yeah, very good. I, and there's something I want to say concerning this too. I've heard ladies say that, um, okay, Dr. Israel is back. Dr. Israel is back. Let's bring him again. Dr. Israel. Your network is just yes. not happy with you today. <laughs> it's as if I offended someone. <laughs> oh, welcome, everybody. Good evening. Welcome. Please share this video. Share the video. Very, very important. Now, I've heard ladies mm. say that um, I have fibroid. They told me to go and drink something, that this stuff will melt the fibroid. The fibroid will disappear. Mm. Um, doctors in the house, let's react to this quickly. Dr. Israel, let's start with you. Yeah, um, you know, we've been hearing since even in, even online and all that. We hear people advertising different liquid um, for people to get mm. so that they will flush their, whatever they call the fiber and um, some people will actually say they drink and they started stooling or I don't know what they say <laughs> they're having. However, um, that's, that's not true. You, those things don't work. And those things don't work. Mm. You cannot take any liquid to, to actually uh, flush out or I don't know what you do to the uh, fiber. But when you are getting to the age of menopause, uh, what can actually happen is that when you are now in your menopausal age, the fibroid can actually shrink up. So some persons may have that and they think they thought that ah, it was the drug that, that worked for them. And another thing is that uh, if it's a pediculous uh, uh, fibroid, those in uh, and it's outside the uterus, it can actually uh, fall off. Mostly when the blood supply to it is no longer, it's not really strong. That can actually fall off. And some persons will add think that uh, it is it is the drug that is is working for them. No, uh, the drug never worked for you because uh, there's no drug like that that can flush that can flush out a uh, mm -hmm. uh, fiber. Do you have anything to add to this? 
what he has said it um there's no shrinking or there's no melting of fibroid because when we say melt you're talking about fat so anyone that says oh it's going to melt it it's it's just a scam it's a sham i've said the only thing that can reduce the size is like dr israel mentioned you're given a tablet to shrink it so that it will be easier to remove and they only decide on that when the size is so big that oh if you remove this thing at this size it will likely give some problems or that size is already causing those pressure symptoms it's causing constipation is disturbing you from passing urine it's giving you fullness to the point where your the, the ovary is now disfigured so those drugs will reduce the size so that it can be easily removed but there's nothing like it disappeared completely or sorry melted hormone changes like dr israel mentioned again can help so if a woman reaches menopause and those hormones that help the fibroid go are no more there then it will reduce in size and the woman doesn't have to bother. But anything that is like magic and they tell you, oh, take this and you flush it out. Fibroid is not stool. It's not worms. It just disappears like that. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Timothy Pai, Dr. Israel. Because um, it's important our people understand that what we are telling them is evidence-based. Well, I don't know if people are looking for shortcuts number one, or they don't really believe the doctors. So Dr. Israel has said it, Dr. Topper has said it, I'm saying it again, there is nothing that can actually melt your fibroid. If you are just coming, you are welcome. So tonight, we are talking about fibroid. Please, um, we're taking questions related to fibroid. So every other question that is not fibroid related would not be attended to. So let me ask you this then, Dr. Israel. Somebody says, I don't want to operate the fibroid. Because they said, if I operate it, I will die. What do you have to say concerning that? So, um, the doctor doesn't just pounce on the patient and says, I want to operate you. We talk about counseling before, during, and after the procedure. Like I said, the doctor is going to sit down and listen to you. How long has it been? What are those symptoms? How do you know you have fibroid? He's going to examine you. When he's examining and he has some suspicion, he will not go further and say, okay, this thing looks like, feels like, let's go and investigate. Let's do a scan. When he has seen that, the scan will tell you where it is, where it is located. When he has done this, he will now sit down with you and take you through the process. Oh, madam, oh, you say you want to have children. Oh, when was the last child you had? Has this have actually affected you? Giving, asking questions. At that point, you now say, okay, this scan that we see, it shows that the fibroid is this is blocking your bladder. So there's going to be a conversation before the surgery. And usually the doctors will take time preparing that patient for surgery if necessary. We only talk about surgery as an emergency when, okay, maybe something is happening. The woman probably is bleeding and almost bleeding to the point of death. But usually with fibroid, the patient would have been prepared so you won't pounce on you and say, okay, go to surgery. People should prepare their mind that by the time you trust this person that is talking to you, assuming that you went to see a medical doctor, a doctor, and he has led you through his process, and he tells you, oh, it's a fibroid. It is left to you to choose, oh, let me go and see another person and listen to what this other person has to say, assuming that that person is also a medical doctor. Then when you sample and you do your market sampling, as some people, some patients do, you cannot decide, oh, doctor has said, two doctors have said, and I'm safe. Let me do the surgery. You don't have to do it. It's not by force. But with proper information and your trust and the, um, um, the skill and the knowledge of your doctor, then do your surgery. You are done and it's over. Though I'll come to that later. Thank you. Dr. Israel, do you have anything to add to what Dr. Tukwe has said? Uh, sorry, can you just um, uh, repeat the question a little for me? Let me... Let me get it. Then it was skipping. Mm. We're talking about somebody that does refuse to go for surgery, like how the thing has reacted. Okay. So a lady said she doesn't want okay. surgery. What else? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when patients, um, you know, in this part of the world, in Africa, let's say Nigeria in particular, when they yes, the word surgery is as if you 
you just carry them to firing squad. You're about to shoot them to death. That's that's what they believe when it comes to surgery. However, in terms of um, fibro treatment, there are medical treatments and there are surgical treatments. But even uh, when we talk about the medical treatment, there are also some other side effects that you'll be thinking about. And we know that these medical treatments are better for those that are already close to the menopause and they are not looking for children again because this drug will reduce the hormones that are produced in the body. And those hormones are the ones that are also produced to, when we talk about someone that wants to give birth to children. So, yeah. and knowing that, so because the before a doctor will even think of taking into uh, any surgical give you do any surgical procedure, there are always what we call a uh, consent. You signing a consent, so that and we call it informed consent. The reason why it's called informed consent is because they've given you the information before you sign the consent, so it's informed consent. So they they will give you all the information you need to know, let you know that there are medical management, there are surgical management, and all that. It is not left for you to choose. And so if you know that you are the kind of person that still needs children, I don't think you'll be thinking of uh, uh, medical management. You should think of surgical management. Uh, and even the surgical management, there are two types. There are, there are different types. So they will also let you know the ones that they think will benefit you. And it also depends on the size of the, of the, of the fiber. Uh, it's not all the when the doctor sees the fibro, they will not just say ah let me go to, go to theater because one thing you should know that um, out of ten ladies, if we have to, have to sample ten ladies, almost seven or eight of them we have fibro, and almost eight seven or eight of them we have fibro. That is to tell you that almost all women in this world has fibro, just that um, some can become troublesome and some. Some are not troublesome. So if you are not having trouble with yours, why disturb yourself? A last sleeping dog lies. So no doctor will take you for surgery when you don't need it. Know that. I believe we are gaining from this discussion tonight because it will be so painful that after we have brought these powerful doctors to come and advise us and talk to us about fibroids, of course, we still make uh, costly mistakes. If you have any question on fibroid, please, you can drop it in the comment section. Take your questions and um, respond to it. We are not taking questions not related to fibroid tonight. Lina, thank you for understanding. I see your comments. Welcome, welcome, um, Mary. Ido, welcome. Now, I want to ask one very important question again. Uh, they say fibroid is cancer. They said if I have fibroid, that means I have cancer. So my life is over. Let's react to that. Dr. Tim, Dr. is that true? Uh, well, when I was defining what a fibroid is, I said it's one of the tumors or one of the growths that we say is non-cancerous. It is, I don't want to give a statistical uh, um, value now, but mostly it never causes cancer. We don't, we, we don't usually don't say always or never in medicine, but Almost always, you find it as a silent, non-troublesome, non-cancerous mass. So it is not cancerous. It doesn't, almost never causes cancer. So when you have a fibroid, it's a benign. We say it's benign. It's calm. It doesn't cause trouble. It's a benign mass. So anyone that is telling you that it causes cancer and you've checked with your doctor, be rest assured that it's not cancer, it doesn't cause cancer. Dr. Israel, do you have anything to add to that quickly? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, that's all. It, it's not cancerous. It's, it's okay. a benign tumor. So, it's, okay. it's not... If you are just coming, you are welcome. You are coming very early. We have addressed some comments, we have addressed um, some questions. So uh, for the question that is being asked by Chisom Chika, we have addressed fibroid and pregnancy. You might have to watch this video again. We're, we're working with time, yeah? Um, now, this question is very important. I'm, I'm coming to pressure child. Do you operate or do you remove all fibroid? They said, I have fibroid. Would you operate all fibroid? Yes or no? 
Do you think that No, I would not. If I, I would operate not all fiber or what? Yes, would you operate all fiber? Okay, uh, I think we've been saying this um, even when we talked about uh, would someone want to go for if someone refused fiber uh, fiber operation. I think we also throw a little light on that. Yes, um, not all fiber do we operate. Not all fiber do we operate. Even when you go into the theater to do the operation, assuming yeah, after your talk and everything, your doctor really want to operate. When we get there, it's not all the seed of the fiber you want to remove. They are so you let it be. Mostly when they are very tiny and where they are, they are tiny and where they are can actually cause can become troublesome. You just let them be. So it is not all fiber that is operated. When the fiber is small. It is small and it's not causing any problem. As Elia said, our last sleeping dog to wait in. So lie. It is just there is not doing any problem. It's not causing any harm. You don't need to operate it. You don't need to trouble yourself. Also, when you are already close to your menopause, I I, I actually say this. When you're already in your menopause and you notice that the, uh, the fiber is still not causing you any harm. It, there is no need of operating it. You just you can just take some medications, and that will help to string the fibroid until the hormone is finally finished, and the fibroid will not string off on its own. So it is not all fibroid that is operated. It's it, it based on size and the signs and symptoms that that the, the fibroid is actually giving the individual. Then you cannot think. If it's post, if it's necessary to operate it or not. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you are just coming, you are welcome. You are coming very early. This program is 8 p.m. Hmm? West African time. Now there's a question from Awila La Udo. We have answered your question. You will have to watch this video from the beginning. We have answered this question. We are working with time. Hmm? We don't want to delay the people beyond the necessary time limit we have here. Now we have a question from Chioma. Choma is saying, why is it that fibroid causes reduced blood in the body? So doctors in the house, let's react quickly because the questions are going to pour in um, very soon. So let's react quickly. We're talking about you and Dr. Israel. Let's go. Okay, so one of the reasons why fibroid can cause anemia, reduce blood, is if that fibroid has been complicated. So there's what you call a red degeneration. That is, this blood fibroid has caused a change in such a way that it's probably causing more blood to pull into the fibroid. Remember I mentioned one of the symptoms, one of the trouble symptoms, heavy bleeding. So the woman is bleeding more than normal. It's because anemia. The woman is having new blood vessels being distorted or uh, disrupted by the, by, the, by the fibroid. So more bleeding means more blood loss, which can cause anemia in the woman. So it's an, a complicated fibroid that will cause you anemia, which is the uh, reduced blood in the body that she mentioned. Dr. Israel, anything to add to that? No, no, no. Okay. I want to add something to her comment here. So why is it that fibroid causes low blood count in the body? Please. There are many causes of uh, low blood count, that is anemia. But for a woman that has fibroid, she has low blood count. Most likely the fibroid is making her bleed heavily, excessive bleeding, heavy menstrual bleeding. So it might be from fibroid. But if you are having anemia, low blood, and you have not seen your doctor, and someone is saying that it's because of fibroid, then it's wrong. You must see a medical doctor mm -hmm. to actually help you arrive at the right diagnosis. So don't say because your blood is low, Therefore, you have fibroid. Is that clear? However, fibroid can make some women develop um, anemia. Okay. Um, see these comments, doctors. Good evening, sir. My sister was diagnosed with fibroid. So she started taking a lot of herbs. Before then, she used to have heavy and painful menstruation. But after the herbs, the pain stopped. Why is this so? Has it started reducing in size? Mm. Let's react quickly. Okay. So, so um, for Didi, look, um, your herbs, you don't know what is inside. Some sneaky herbalists go as far as 
grinding paracetamol and some other medications that could have helped on their own into their herbs. So you don't know what your herb contains. Your herb may contain some things that will help with the pain, but you're not sure of the content, you're not sure of the one that is actually working. So I would not recommend any herbs. I, would, I don't know why that particular herb is working. And until we can look at the herbs and say, okay, this is what the manufacturer or the herbalist said is inside, we can't, I can't give any comments uh, as to why it seems to be working. Dr. Israel, would you want to react to this? Too? Okay. Uh, are you, can you hear me very well? Yes, I can yes, hear you. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, one thing, I want to find out how old is this your sister. Remember, I, I used to say when you are getting to your menopause, they, these are symptoms may reduce. Another thing is that it's only, uh, we actually cannot tell what the herb is made of. The herb can be made up of things that will mask the pain, that will mask the pain and also mask the bleeding. So if these are happening, you you be you may be thinking that yes, this person is being treated or uh, something is happening. As uh, one good thing is happening, just like when we talk about this melting of fibro, it's almost the same thing. Uh, so yeah. first thing first, you let's find what, what what's the age of this of this person in question, and also because the, uh, the drug have actually marked the pain and also uh, in a way help to max the bleeding he actually think that it's working so i will still advise even though you're taking all those many things or those many herbs i still advise that you go and see your doctor um, let them do a scan and, and, and be sure that yes you're doing the right thing because those uh, herbs you are taking you never can tell their side effects what they can do to your liver and your kidney as time goes on. So please let's be let's be really careful about herbs that we take. Seriously, let's be careful about it. Thank you very much. I, I like I like the later part of your comment, Dr. Israel. Let's be very careful of what we put into our mouth. Even as doctors, we tell you these are the possible side effects to look out for, but you might not have it. Most times with this herb, how about concussions you take? There's a very high tendency they can damage your kidney, your liver, and then you're having complications, you have fibroid, you have kidney problem, you have liver problem. Now, let's take another comment here that says, um, if they operate my fibroid, will it come back? I was told that fibroid will not grow back again after, after the operation. What do you have to say to that? Yeah, so this was the part I wanted to talk about when we talk about, okay, you went for surgery. The fibroid, one of the complications or one of the problems with fibroid is that it can recall. Remember, we talked about the causes not being known and the causes being theoretical and based on research and based on history and based on events that have occurred in the past. That's why I grouped into those categories. So th those things, they are still going on. They are still hormones in the woman's body. The, the, the woman is still in the uh, age category that she's producing hormones. So fibroids can recall, even after being removed surgically. Dr. Israel, you want to add anything again, please? No, no, I don't think I want to add anything. It can okay. actually be a call. It can. Yeah. It can. Can we so, Dr. Israel, let me ask you this one. Then we'll go to Dr. Tim. Uh, he says, My sister had a fibroid before. Uh, my sister had a fibroid before she had before she had two children. After the two children, it, it's worrying her again. When we go to the hospital, they did operation and removed the womb. So she can't have child again. Okay, she can't have child again. I, I believe that's what you wanted to say. Doctor, why is it too big? I believe we can put ourselves in our mind to see what is was trying to type here for us. Yeah, okay, I, I think maybe uh, what she's trying to say is that, or what the person is trying to say, or uh, what the person is trying to say is that uh, maybe the fiber became very big this other time, and 
uh, they have to remove the womb of the of the sister. Uh, if I'm not, if I'm, if I'm correct. Hopefully, yes, yes, yes. Hello. I think so. Yes, uh, yes, yes, um, yes. Okay. So, um, now your your sister has given birth to two children. I don't, I don't know if they are sex. I don't know the sex of the two children. That is their gender. Whether they are two male or two female. I have our children, our children. Um, that's the most important thing. At least he has two children already. Now the main stay, stay of treatment for fibroid is is direct to me, removing of the of the uterus. So if the if actually I, I, I wasn't there, I wasn't the one that operates operated the woman. So if what they saw, uh, because when we try to do this um, preserving surgery, trying to remove the sickness. Uh, of the fibro, and when they try to remove them, they notice that removing the those the, removing the fibro itself is as good as removing the uterus. It is better you just remove the uterus to save the woman's life. Because if you try to do hero superhero or superman in that process, you may you may cause more danger than good. I believe that. Um, I cannot tell you the reason why the fibro become very big, but it's hormona is all of, it's all about the hormone of the lady. It's all about the hormone of the lady. So I think the hormone was much, and it makes the growth of that fibro um, uh, uh, pro the progression to be very, be very fast. But I, I also believe that when the doctor decided to remove the uh, uterus, that was the best uh, uh, treatment for us at that time. That was the best treatment as at that time. Yes, you may so be surprised that they have the mind of removing just the fibroid when they were going into the uh, theater. But when they get into the theater and they notice that, man, this thing, removing just the fibroid may not, may not, we may, we not have the situation and we, it's as good as removing the uterus. So they will just have to remove the uterus and, and save the life of the woman. Uh, thank God he has two kids already. Do you want to add anything to this? Yeah, I'll just quickly give an example of a patient that I, that was a family member, a very close family member. Every time she had menses, she would nearly die, according to her. Abdominal pain, she would roll on the floor. This woman was in her 40s. She had three boys already. And this thing would come every cycle. She was already maybe 44, 40, 44, 45. And this scan was done and we saw that they saw that it was fibroid. The fibroid had already undergone red degeneration. That is, there was so much blood in it. The fibroid could not be differentiated from blood clot. And the doctor said, look, madam, the option you have is to remove the fibroid. But the way the fibroid is located, it's as if you're going to cut into the uterus. Madam, at the age of 45, are you looking for any child again? You have three boys. The woman said no. The best option at that point is to remove the uterus and save that woman that stress, losing blood every time, that stress of almost dying, that pain. So most of the time, why fibroid would have grown that big is that the person that had the fibroid did not take proper action when she started feeling those symptoms. She ignored it to allow it to grow. I've known some people that for some reasons, they were putting the uses of religious methods, using faith, and they did not keep on growing. So we are, we are happy with that your sister at least had two children, and she was able to have the um, surgery done. But um, that's what usually happens. Delay can make it grow so big that it now becomes inevitable. And also, she has completed her family size. She, maybe she's not looking for more children. And the doctor looks at me removing just a few nodules and having it recall and damaging the uterus and doing some manipulations, or maybe there's bleeding actively going on. Let me just remove everything and save this money stress. That's what the, the situation could be. Thank you, um, doctors. Okay, well, we are, still going, we are soon going to run out of time. So I, I want to appeal to us to be very, very fast. Why is this echoing? Okay. 
Now we have some comments here, some questions. Let's see. Um, goodness, Albert, you would have to watch this video again from the beginning. We have addressed your question. So please watch this video again. I'm, I'm sorry if I addressed this. You came in um, late. I'm sorry. Now, someone is asking us, I have my brother. He's diagnosed of fibroid. What is the cause of fibroid in men? Let me just react quickly and see, madam, men cannot have fibroid unless the man has a womb. Men do not have fibroid. I don't know who made that diagnosis. That diagnosis will never come from a medical doctor. Uh, please. So a man would never have fibroid unless the man has a womb, a uterus. Or maybe he's a woman and they think he's a man. I'm just saying. Okay. Chioma is asking us, at the age of 42, can one still be worried about fibroids since you said that approaching menopause helps to reduce it? Let's react quickly. So, yes, um, she can still be worried about fibroids, but at that point now, depending on the size, depending on the duration, depending on the symptoms that associate with that fibroid, you can choose to ignore it or watch it or take medications and push that delay to menopause. Okay, very good. Um, if you're just coming, you're welcome. Let's see, let's see, let's see. This one is not related to the question. Mary Jane, your question is not related to our topic tonight. Uh, let's see, okay, let's take it. Please, I'm scared though. Anytime my menstruation comes, it stays for three weeks and some days. I have gone to the hospital and the doctor said it's not fibroid, it's hormonal imbalance. And I no longer, and I'm no longer comfortable. Even after I have given birth to my triplets, it's still the same. Okay, doctor, please advise this lady quickly. So, um, Mary Jane Collins, I would recommend that you see your, see a consultant, a, a specialist. The doctor will give you counsel there will be proper examination. Of course, you've done one and they told you it's not fibroid. So there are so many things that can cause excessive uh, menstrual bleeding, prolonged days, prolonged increased quantity. Your doctor has to examine and investigate. You can see a specialist, see another doctor and get what exactly is causing it. They talk about hormonal imbalance. There are some things you can do that doctors can do to help with that. That's, that's what I can say about that. Okay. Very important question. Someone says, I have fibroid, and they say I have infection. Infection caused my fibroid. Dr. Israel, what, what do you have to say about that? That he has, what did he say caused the fibroid? Infection. Infection? Yeah, yes. the, the lady was told okay. that infection caused what? fibroid. Well, I know we used to hear so many th different things in this world, but um, effect, uh, infection will not cause fibro. Um, infection will not cause fibro at all, at all. Yeah? Infection will not cause fibro. Um, I, I don't know what to say more than that, but I know infection <laughs> will not cause fibro too. <laughs> so it, it should please, well. uh, try to know <laughs> what to say. <laughs> What do you have to I, say I can't to see. I, I can't add anything to it. Infection does not or will not cause fibroid. <laughs> so see another doctor. Make sure that it's a doctor that you saw, and get the cause of the fibroid. Um, there's something I yeah, want yeah. to draw our the, the attention of the listeners to. If you listen carefully, most times or almost every time, we'll tell you see a medical doctor. You can see another medical doctor. The whole essence of this platform is to raise awareness, to advise you, see your medical doctor or see another medical doctor in case you are not okay. Maybe you saw me and the advice, the treatment plan I gave to you was not okay. You are in your right to go see for and seek for another medical opinion. Do you understand? Yeah. Yes. Um, we are soon going to round up. We're almost out of time. If you're just coming, you're welcome. You came in very late. We're talking about fibroid. We answer so many questions tonight on fibroid. Now, um, can a woman of 38 who had bilateral tubal ligation have any fear of fibroid? Dr. T, let's react quickly. Yes, she can. 
Okay. Okay. Doctor Israel, what do you have to say? I can't try, bro. Now, because uh, your tuber ligation does not stop your your milk production, and also, uh, what the fibroid is at the is affect the muscles of the muscle wall of your of your uterus. So you can the person can also have it cannot come down with fibroid as well. Okay. Um, I'm waiting for operation for fibroid of eleven centimeters. Okay, a do precious child. I want to believe that your doctor has actually seen you, examined you, advised you, and believe that the best management for you is operation. So I want to wish you the best the successful surgery and you go in, you come out, you do very well. Yes. Okay, doctors in the house, as we plan to round up tonight on fibroid, is there anything you want to say that we haven't touched? Any question or anything you have heard about fibroid that you feel like we should? Tonight. Uh, I think we, we, we've actually covered quite a lot and uh, I'm satisfied even if I was a patient and I wanted to know about I think I'm satisfied but um, I, I think as a parting uh, maybe a footnote people, ladies should be careful to observe their own bodies if you have any of those symptoms you need to see your doctor and say, oh, doctor, I have abdominal pain. Oh, I feel full. Oh, doctor, I feel like I need to go to the toilet to pass urine every time. Oh, I notice that my message is different in quantity and quality in, in um, duration than the last time. The earlier you complain, the quicker the doctor picks up if there's something wrong. And if it's a fibroid, you can quickly start watching it. That's all I'll say. Dr. Israel, do you have anything to add to this tonight as we round up? Okay. Um, I want to first of all apologize for my network <laughs> that has been doing its own, its own thing. Uh, also, uh, we want to say for as many ladies, just have it in the back of the mind that you may come down with, you may come down with fibro at one point in time of your life, of your lifetime. If you have it, there's no problem. There are treatment for it. If you don't, thank God that you know you are not having it. And I saw a question when I just joined in, uh, this last time about bleeding, bleeding for almost three weeks. Please, if you are, if the doctor you are seeing is not a gynecologist, please switch and see a gynecologist. A gynecologist is a doctor exactly. that specializes in women, women condition. Please switch and see a gynecologist. Not just go and see another doctor. See a gynecologist, a specialist in that field, so that they can give you the best and let you know what and what you you should know and you should do. Um, I want. To, I think that's all I want to say. I also want to say good night to everyone. Uh, thank you, Doctor Israel. I, I wish people are really taking notes of some of the comments we make here. When we are referring you sometimes, we tell you where you should go. See a gynecologist, see a neurologist, see a gastroenterologist. Very important. Uh, please. Uh, I'm having this echo and I don't know why. Okay. Are you, playing, are, you, are you getting the feedback, the echo from my end? No, I'm not. There's no echo. I think I'm hearing this echo. Okay, okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we want to say a very big thank you to you for joining us on this program. This program is usually 8 p.m. every Sunday. So if you come here late, you might miss some very important uh, discussion. So I advise you to please watch from the beginning again. We have to go now. Um, I'm really feeling uncomfortable with this echo. I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, we'll do well to fix that next time. Thank you, Dr. Tintope, for joining us tonight. You can follow. You can follow. You can follow all the doctors you see here now. Dr. Tintope is very active on TikTok. So if you are on TikTok, you can look for him on TikTok. What's your handle on TikTok, sir? Quickly. It's so it's at Dr. Tintope. Just one word. Doctor. Tintope. Okay, Dr. Israel. What's your handle? Okay, uh, in Facebook, the handle is just my name there, Israel Doc. That's my 
Facebook handle. Yeah, thank you so much. And you know my handle, simple, Dr. Fredota, everywhere. And then on Facebook, there are two, Dr. Fredosta and Dr. Fredosta Official. I want to say a very big thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We hope to see you next Sunday, 8 p.m. Take care and have a wonderful day. Remember, good life. That's it. Good life. Good life, in a sense. In a sense. In a sense. Yes, at Dr. Dos, they meet up on TikTok. Take care and have a wonderful night. Bye bye. Bye bye, guys. Okay, bye bye, doctors.